on this and uh, speak to uh, Sir John Curtis, Professor of Politics at the University of Strathclyde. Um, John, so one avenue closed. Um, would an SNP majority at the next general election change anything? Well, the SNP are certainly hoping that by fighting the next general election on a single issue, that this would provide a clear indication as to whether or not there is majority support for independence. And the truth is that they are probably right in making that calculation uh, because it's already the case, I mean, irrespective of Nicola Sturgeon's call to fight um, a, an election on the single issue. If you look at what happened in the Scottish Parliament election of last year, 89% um, of those people who were yes supporters voted for the SNP or their allies, the Greens, and only 10% of those who are opposed to independence voted that way. Um, so we're already in a situation where the constitutional issue dominates the choice that voters in Scotland makes. I think the much more difficult question is, well, even if the SNP were to get more than 50% of the vote in Scotland in the next UK general election, how would that change the view of the uh, uh, UK government that emerges out of that election? Now, here I think the truth is there's another bit of politics which we've not talked about at all today. I think the SNP have been calculating for some time that there was a pretty good chance that after the next UK election, uh, we would find ourselves with a parliament in which no single party had an overall majority and that perhaps the Labour Party would have to look to the SNP for uh, the votes that were needed to sustain a minority administration. Given that in the last two months, the Labour Party has emerged with more than a 20-point lead in the opinion polls because of the Conservatives' uh, difficulties under Liz Truss, that's no longer looking like as likely an option. So we could well find our situations where Nicola Sturgeon fights the refer uh, election on the question of independence, gets more than 50% support, but the UK government, because it's got an overall majority, uh, uh, even including a UK Labour government, would continue to say no. And then after that, it's not entirely clear where we go. Do we know whether voters um, get frustrated with this uh, seemingly unending preoccupation with constitutional matters in Scotland, where more domestic matters, and I'm thinking of uh, the health service and education, don't seem to get much of a look in? Well, the truth is, if that was the view of voters, then they should not be dividing as strongly on constitutional lines as they are. Voters themselves have already decided this is the central issue when it comes uh, to the ballot box. Um, meanwhile, more broadly, I mean, when it comes to, you know, how will people react to today's judgment? Well, the truth is, one half of Scotland will be relieved. 95% of no supporters don't want a referendum. But equally, the other half of Scotland will be disappointed because 95% of supporters of independence do want a referendum. So the question of holding a referendum is intimately bound up with people's views about whether Scotland should be independent. And that issue itself is now very intimately to, uh, intertwined with how people vote in elections. So, yes, I'm sure there are lots of people in Scotland who would prefer it to be clear that either Scotland wanted to be inside the Union or wanted to be independent, but that's not where we're at. We're at a position where, frankly, neither nationalists nor unionists could be sure that they would win in any uh, indication or ballot of public opinion, be it an election or be it a referendum. Uh, does today's legal ruling change the way uh, perhaps UK politics is conducted in the run-up to the next general election? No, to be honest, I don't think it will make any difference at all to how the parties uh, south of the Anglo-Scottish border will be fighting the election. It's very, very clear. Just listen to Prime Minister's questions today. Um, the Labour Party is intent on fighting on the issue of the economy, which it now believes is an Achilles heel for uh, the UK government in the wake of uh, the difficulties that the Liz Trust administration had with the financial markets and the fact that the UK is now heading for a sharp declining living standards, at least if the Office of Budget Responsibility are right. But equally, you know, Scotland has long since been a rather different political environment. Um, and in Scotland, the election will be about something else. And it will be, frankly, about the constitutional question. Um, the truth is now, politics in Scotland 
are different from those in England and Wales in much the same way as politics in Northern Ireland have long been very different from those in the rest of the UK. Don't think of the United Kingdom as one single political entity. It's now become three rather different uh, political uh, spaces in which parties compete. John, thank you for that. Sir John Curtis, Professor of Politics at the University of Strathclyde.